Okay, hello, hello, hello everyone. So we are on part 60, 60, 60 of the Advanced Relationship and Family Academy. Today is July 13 and we are starting. If you are new, if you have not been here before, I need you to find the chat box. Yes, exactly, it's wow. Find the chat box and say hello to me. So I know that you are in communication because this uh, webinar is going to be extremely interactive. Yes, so find the chat box and say hello. Um, if you are online, you need to talk to me. Okay. Wow, Mexico. Baja Mexico. Amazing. That's very nice. Okay. So... Here we go, we are starting. Agreements, no recording, please. No video, no audio, no, no recording. You can record it on your mind, but it's better to know. Nothing I say today is true, unless, of course, it is true for you. This seminar has been designed to bring about a shift in viewpoint from effect to cause, from slow, unnoticeable decline to a powerful, never-ending climb. But, the key to getting those results is participation. Uh, hello, Lima. Nice. Yes, Manuela. Yeah. So the key, the key to getting those results is participation. If you don't participate with each and every question I ask, you will not have the shift in viewpoint. However, if you do, my friend, you will discover just how powerful you are. And it is nothing you've ever imagined. If you're not in communication, if you just inhale information, you will, of course, suffocate. Okay, so now what we're going to talk about, we are dealing with the snake, with the relationship snake. We've been talking about the relationship snake in the past 10 uh, or oh, nine lessons. This is the 10th lesson. And in this lesson, we're going to talk a little bit more about the relationship snake. I'm going to talk to you about extreme wisdom uh, I'm going to show you some amazing thing. It will be short lesson to the point, extremely powerful. And how powerful it will be for you, of course, depends on how much you will participate. So here we go. It is important to remember that if that uh, even the first that the first snake in history beat one of the most important important people ever, Eve. A lot from Munich, yes, Germany. Now, if Eve fell into the snake trap, don't be so hard on yourself if you fell in the past into the snake trap. And there's almost not a person alive, no one that I know that don't have or didn't have at least uh, one snake in his life. And celebrate the fact you now know how to recognize the snake and the seven steps he or she uses to destroy. So I showed you in the lesson, uh, not this one, but uh, not the, the one before, but two lessons ago, I show you the seven steps on how to recognize a snake. Uh, if you have any question, if you're not sure, if you have not uh, attended that lesson, you can go to gprosperity.com forward slash FAC and you can find the recordings there. It's totally free. We are going to learn much more in the Relationship Healer Seminar, how to detect, handle, and cure snakes, even if it was you, and how to create the best relationships ever. Yeah, ah, so it is a G Prosperity a Advanced FAC. Okay, here we go. So that's the actual link. Next, we are going to study about specialized, a specialized venom that ensures you are not going to get close to successful or rich people. So there is something that makes sure that uh, the people around you uh, will not be rich or successful and that uh, successful and rich people somehow will never get close to you and you will not become rich or successful because you will not let other people become close to you. There is a specific venom that's being used that makes sure that that will not happen. Yes, it's very interesting. More than that, that spatial venom makes sure money will not, will not get into your bank account. 
So this is the um, venom that uh, can take a Jewish person and be make him Christian or Muslim. No money. No money coming to your bank account. <laughs> it's a really deadly venom. Okay. Now, yes, you get bitten and money leaves your bank account. This spatial poison get you away from four specific things. One, people you love. Two, people who succeed. Three, rich people and four, money. Any idea what this venom is? What is this thing that's so deadly? Any idea? Criticism. Mm -hmm. Jealousy. Very good. I don't know. Yes, past. Any idea what this venom is? The venom is composed of one word. When a snake tells you about your spouse, why do you agree that she will use you uh, in this way? What, or when the snake tells you about your workplace, hey, uh, wake up, they're using and abusing you. you. You had this thing happening to you, I'm sure. Or when the a snake tells you uh, about your best friend, didn't you notice that he or she is simply using you? Everyone sees it about you. Wake up. This is all version of that spatial venom. Any idea what this ven venom is? What is this venom? Truth, lies. What is this venom? What is this thing that basically the, the person, the snake doing ego? What does it mean ego? I don't know what the word ego mean actually. So may, you need to define it for me. Putting me in doubt, that's correct. It's putting you in doubt. My intention is to help you. Yes, doubt. The venom is called, I'm going to give you the name and you will see that at the beginning you'll say, what? But as I will explain, you will see that this is really amazing what he's doing. It's quite unbelievable. Making you feel victim. Okay. So, and just write to me, please, what is um, ego? Because I have a misunderstood word here. Uh, to convince you that success is not possible. Okay, that's good. Okay. So the venom is called exploit. And I want to define for you the word exploit and then I will explain how does it work. Exploit means take advantage of somebody. To take selfish or unfair advantage of a person or situation, usually for personal gain. Use something for benefit to use or develop something in order to gain benefit. So this is just the definition of the word exploit. Let's have a look at what the snake is doing when the snake tells you you are being exploited. So this is really what the, what the snake tells you. You have been expo exploited. Didn't you notice uh, she, she is simply using you or the other one? Why do you agree? that she will use you uh, in this way. They're telling you, look, you've been exploited. Hey, wake up. They're using and abusing you. This all basically is telling you, hey, you have been exploited and you are not aware of it. That's all what he's trying to convince you. Now, when the snake tells you that you are being exploited, he or she tries to convince you to give less. Have a look at that. What they're trying to convince you is to give less. They tell you, look, you're giving too much. You need to give less because you're being exploited. Amazing, Manuela, yes. The snake tells you, you're too good. You hear it is too, uh, your heart is too soft. What I mean is that the snake attacks self-esteem 
and a person responses by either believing or attacking based on their self-esteem, which is called ego. So self-esteem is ego, but I still don't know what it is. What is ego? Maybe Igor? Yes, very powerful, yes. To give less means to help less, mean killing yourself because the most valuable thing to us is to help, exactly. So they're telling you, look, 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 you are too good. And you cannot be too good, you can be only too bad. <laughs> you are too, too soft, your heart is too soft. No, you, you never, you never too soft. You sometimes think that you ought to be more rough, more stern, but the truth is that every time things went f uh, bad with you is because you got too hard. Things never went bad with you because you were too soft. I'm told this is all the time and I tell myself that I'm too good and my heart is too soft. I see this is a big weakness. Yeah, it's actually not true. There's no such thing as too good. It's a lie. Too good meaning to help the most amount of people. Your heart is too soft, which means to love. Love melt any barrier. You are too generous. No, if you're generous, it means you have. So if you have to be ungenerous, it means you have to not have first. You are too naive. No. Who is more successful, children or adults? Who is more alive, children or adults? You give too much. Nonsense. If you have a lot, you cannot give too much. So if someone convinces you that you give too much, it basically convinces you that you cannot have. If you have a billion dollars and you give 100,000, uh, is it too much? No, 100,000, it's too much only if you have only 101. So basically what they try to tell you is become weak. They're really trying to tell you to become weak. And you, sucker, bite. But no more. No more. When someone tell you you're too good, when someone tell you your heart is too soft, when someone tell you, oh, you poor thing, you need to rest. No, you rest when you die. A piece of myself that judge myself. How can you judge yourself? Uh, and how you, the nothingness, can judge you? How, how a glass can judge a glass? It's just, it's just a misunderstood word that you heard and you're using. It's incorrect. If you cannot actually define it in a way that makes sense, I would suggest you stop using it. Are you with me? You really been, what's happening is you trying to, they try to convince you to become weak. That's excellent, excellent. And so if you realize that when someone come and tell you those things, they tell you just, look, please become weak. So it will be too, too so you are too soft. Please become um, uh, poor, so it would be, you are too generous. Uh, please become old, so you are not so because you are too naive. The, it's actually the opposite. Yes, this is really exactly the opposite of what you need to do. You give, give, give and the other person does not give enough. That's what they tell you. No. The snake tries to convince you to give less or be less. The correct thing, how will you want someone else to behave to you? Do you want someone else to love you too much? Or to think that he love, or that he thinks that it's too much what he's giving you? Do you want the other person to be soft or hard on you? Do you want the other person to be generous or, or bastard? Do you want the other person to be like a kid with you, naive, or to be conning and cheat you? Do you want the other person to give you so much that you have to give him back? 
or do you want him to be stingy? If you look at that list and you'll say, but one second, how do I want someone else to behave to me? It will be extremely obvious to you that they're trying to kill you. A God cannot give too much. A God is always forgiving and soft. A God is always generous. A God is always naive. He always believe his children. A God always give too much. He give the whole planet and brain and future and everything. So what is too much? Are you with me? Can you see that? Just be the person on the other side and you will see that anyone that convince you that you are too soft is too bad. Anyone that convince you that uh, you are too good, he wants you to be very good towards him. <laughs> and he's trying to convince you to be bad to others. Are you with me? If you're extremely powerful, you cannot give too much. What does the word too mean? Excessive, more than expected. Are you with me? So when someone come to you and say you are too good, what you should do is say, how would I want someone else to behave to me? Less good or more good? Exactly. Look at the sun. Exactly. Just give. When someone tell you, uh, you know, you are too soft to this employee. How do you want to be to behave to when you are an employee? When someone say you are too generous, how will you want your friends to behave to you? To be generous or to be stingy? Are you with me? Uh, when you are, when someone tell you you na you are naive, too naive. How do you want someone in a relationship to be with you, naive or cunning? Do you want someone to give, 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 so you have to give back, so your urge to exchange goes up and things improve, or give less, give less, give less, so things die? You see, what the snake wants, he wants you to be less, give less. He wants to convince you that you are not is powerful and he's doing that by telling you you are being exploited yes now less what what does he want you to give less what this next try to convince you to give less less what less life less good less help less life less help love Love, yes, exactly, exactly, life, exactly. Oops, okay. So we have a line that should not be here, but fine. Less love, less patient, less generous, less understanding, less of a friend, less contributing, less valuable, less. What actually happened is, the snake is trying to make you small while camouflaging it with, I care about you. So he tries to make you small. He says, look, you, you, are, you need to be less. You need to be less. You need to be less. But I'm hiding it by telling you, no, but I'm helping you. It's only for your own good. Are you with me? It's really amazing. If you will actually look at your so-called friends, you will be able to, to spot immediately who are those that are not your friend. Those that are not your friend are those that tell you less love, less patient, less generous, less understanding, less of a friend, less contr contributing, less valuable, less. Those people that come to you and say, work more, be more, love more, be more extreme, be more patient, be more generous, 
be more understanding, be more of a friend, contribute more, be more valuable, that's a real friend. Are you with me? Yes. This is really unbelievable, yes? Um, yes, it is true, so true. And I have many friends who say that I should be less generous to others, but not to them. Exactly, yes. Yes. Does the snake uh, and the physical universe work as partner because it uh, always seems when the snake uh, poison you, the physical universe confirm it. I mean, no, the physical universe don't confirm anything. The physical universe don't confirm anything. You find only what you are looking for. The physical universe confirm nothing. That's a big lie. The truth is you find only what you are looking for. Only. You find only what you're looking for. To stop giving some so much so you have less. Exactly. Are you with me? The snake wants you to be less. Less loving, less patient, less generous, less understanding, less of a friend, less contributing, less valuable, less. What, what, must happen, what must happen for you to be convinced to give less? For you to be convinced to give less, you first must be convinced you cannot create enough. Are you with me? For you to be convinced to give less, you first must be convinced you cannot create enough. Are you with me? It's really fascinating beyond belief. Now this, this mechanism has so many ramifications that you still don't see. But as we will progress, you will see it will be just unbelievable. There's a person who tells people I'm too smart, so it is hard to have a conversation with me. Guess what happened? Yes. Yes, this is also another thing, too smart when they actually mean that you are not, because if you are too smart, it's amazing. Most, most valuable lesson. Thank you. Yes, Marcel. Yes. Ah, yes, yes, yes. Always think that I can create my way out of my problems. Yes, always know that you can, you can create your way out of any situation. Um, what I find is that the more that I give, the more comes my way. I cannot understand why. We will explain why. I will explain why. Now, this venom causes you to get away from powerful and good people. It's really amazing. This venom causes you to get away from powerful and good people. Why? Because powerful and good people uh, give a lot and expect a lot back. But if you are not willing to give a lot, you will not be next to powerful people because you will not be, a, you, you will not be on their radar because the volume is too small. Are you with me? You are not creating any effect and you are not allowing them to create an effect on you. What is the snake logic? What is the snake logic? Why, why he behave like that? Now, before, before we will find out what is the snake logic, I want to talk to you about a new and life-changing service I'm about to offer. You are the first people that are going to hear about it. It is extremely, extremely special, and it has a very specific uh, purpose in mind. Here we go. The service is called Extreme Wisdom, and it is a part of the university. It was designed to act as your spiritual fix. And I will explain why you need the spiritual fix. Why do you need this uh, uh, handling every single day? 
why, why the spirit really needs a fix. Now you have tried the hard way, which is living without this knowledge. How about the right way? This is basically what I'm going to explain to you. There is a right way to live. The idea is that people have problems, challenges, pain, anxiety, worry, doubt, sicknesses, accidents, relationships, snakes, and a lot of other spiritual and physical destroyer in their life. Yes, Anita. There is lots of physical and spiritual destroyer on your, in your life. It seems like life is set up to hand you problems, issues, difficulties, and even if your life is fairly uneventful, you know it is temporary. The question, of course, the question, of course, is what can you do to improve your life? What can you do to improve your life? You can try to handle each situation as it comes, but experience shows, experience shows you that prevention is better than the cure. And the cure of life situation result in you being smaller and less able. You'll see that every time you hit a barrier in life, the end result is, yes, you may fix it, but in most time you become smaller and less able. After every emergency, you become more careful. You didn't see that old people become more alive, more daring. They become more careful, more useless. The older people get, the more useless they get. The more fragile they get. So something is not correct, yes? You can be more careful in your, re in your dealing with people. You can do the less communication with your spouse, less communication with your children, less communication with your body. Most people try the less communication route. And if you are somewhere on the scale of life, you know the result is death. So you know that the handling of less communication Less, less, less is not the correct handling, yet you're doing it. You're doing it. You're doing it in many, many areas of your life. You don't go to the gym, although you should. You don't talk to your spouse, although you should. You don't um, expose your withholds, although you should. You know that your life depends on it. And not only this life, but your next life and next life and next life. So something is missing. You can cheat, lie, and engineer situations so as to make sure you are okay and the hell with everyone else. I've seen it happening. It can be done, but one, it is short-lived, and two, the price is way too expensive. The price is giving up the freedom of truth. The price is way, way, way too expensive. I've seen it being done. I've, I've seen people doing it left, right, and center. Most of society doing it. They lie, they cheat, they, um, they just engineer the thing that what's in it for me. You can ignore what is going on with things around you and have a viewpoint of it has nothing to do with me. The problem with that is it most definitely has some, everything to do with you. And by the time you realize it, your life will be destroyed. So you start, up, start to have a, a debt and you say, well, it's nothing to do with me. I don't remember it. It will somehow fix. A karma will fix it. A, a whatever will fix it. Um, I, I'm, I just mustn't be too naive and everything will be okay. But by the time you realize what's going on, it's too, too late, you are destroyed. So it doesn't work. You cannot just ignore your credit card. You cannot just ignore your health. You cannot just ignore your weight. You cannot just ignore your spiritual condition. You cannot just ignore your income. You cannot just ignore your relationship. But most people do that. They either lie, or they ignore. All those methods have one thing in common. They end up with you losing. That's the problem. So what is the handling? 
the game in this universe seems to be a game between life and death, beauty and ugliness, help and betrayal, success and failure. But a close examination will reveal that the game is between truth and lie. The game is not between life and death. The game is not between beauty and ugliness, not help and betrayal, but the game is between truth and lie. Because truth remove barriers and lies put barriers there. Are you with me? So the more truth you gain, the better your life will be. Even with you doing nothing, now, since you many times uh, look at life as something really, really short, like what's happened last week, you don't always notice it. And also you don't notice it because you are not as aware. So you don't validate the improvements. So things become bad. But if you will actually look and if you actually validate the improvement, you will see that the game is between truth and lies. And every time you get a piece of truth, you improve. I'll explain a bit more. The problem is that this universe is composed of lies. And hence, it seems one cannot win. And most people surrender to the lies of this universe as they feel overwhelmed. They feel they cannot win. They feel the game is lost before it began. You need to do $100,000 and you have no way. You don't know where to start. You have no way to win. You come in this world and you know that less than 0.1% of the population, less than 0.1% of the population actually will be successful. It's not such a good odds. Will you go on an airplane if you know that your odds of survival is less than 0.1%? Even marriage has more probability of success. <laughs> you know? <laughs> So, so this proposition of being in this universe uh, is not a good, it's not a good uh, game. Yes, more communication, more help, more love, more learning, more, yes. So many tech issues then I welcome, yes, yes. Every person that had any kind of challenge had to face the dilemma. What is the correct way? Because you had the option of lying. You had the option of ignoring. You had all those options that I gave you. And you had the option of finding the truth about it, of confronting. 99.9% .9 of the cases, you choose the wrong option. Why? Because life gives you so many problems that you think you are overwhelmed. You, you have to go to bed with the enemy. You feel that the only way for you to somehow survive is to go to bed with the enemy. That's what most people do. And so they start to lie, they start to cheat, they ignore, they don't produce, they suppress people, they, they just really make a mess. Truth or lies? Most people, most of the time, choose lies. Most people, most of the time, choose lies. Most people, most of the time, choose the shortcut, only to discover that the shortcut is the highway to hell. Most people give up before they even begin. The automatic response is lies. The automatic response is giving up. The automatic response is being weak. It is being afraid. It is failing. You take a person and you tell him, uh, you know, you need to complete this project by two o'clock and he immediately tell you, but I'm tired. I didn't eat. I must go to the restroom. I must drink being super weak or he tells you well why didn't you do that well you know i had a headache he's lying that's not the why are you with me most of the people 
lie and cheat and being weak and, and being afraid and failing most of the time. It's, it's just crazy and a miracle that anything even happened. And people want to be successful, but they don't know how. They don't know these things. Why? Why do people habitually select lies over truth, failure over success? Why is it? Why? Why people select habitually lies over truth? Fake realities, they don't know how to choose, can confront the truth. For so many years, they're choosing between truth and uh, lies and they don't know how to choose can confront, how come they cannot confront the truth? Because they don't help enough, mm -hmm. not willing to confront. It's the easy option, like looks easier, yes. They've been tricked, yes. They're already given up and now chose to the easy way, yes. After so many lies, it just seems normal, yes. Trying to avoid losing, yes. Yes, not to be a sucker, yes. The truth hurts and needs to uh, fight uh, fights in my experience. It uh, may seem easier to take that the route, may see leader look successful through met yes, of not being honest, yes, yes, yes. Okay, the answer is simple. Everything around you always convinces you that lies wins. And indeed, lies do win. Win in getting what you want. Win means, uh, win is getting what you want and not getting what you don't want. This is what wins mean. If you look around, you'll see that lies wins. The physical universe win. Lies win. This is really amazing. Everything around you always convinces you that lies win. And indeed, lies do win. The physical universe wants you to fail and doesn't want you to succeed. And hence, from the physical universe viewpoint, when you fail, when you choose lies, the physical universe wins. Do you understand the point here? You see, the physical universe, from the physical universe, everything, every time you lie, Every time you give up, every time you become an effect, it wins. So lies win from the physical universe viewpoint. And you buy this thing. You buy this thing because you evaluate things physically. You don't understand the mechanics. You see the show, you listen to the marketing department, which called the physical universe. And the, the marketing department tells you hey, it's good to fail. And you buy that. Are you with me? To be able to raise above the insanity of the physical universe, to choose truth over lies, to choose life over death, you need more truth than the lies the physical universe hand out to you. So there is here a competition. Uh, you are the customer and you have two routes, the physical universe route, which give you lies and a lot. And you've got the spiritual universe that gives you truth. And you need to choose, you need to choose to be able to raise above the insanity of the physical universe. All your attention is on the physical universe because even your body is part of the physical universe. So to be able to raise above the insanity of the physical universe, to choose truth over lies, to choose life over death, you need more truth than lies, the physical universe. So if the physical universe gives you 100 lies, you need at least 101 truth. If there is a certain amount of darkness, you need a certain amount of light. Are you with me so far? Lies are very fragile, and hence you need a lot of them. But lies crumble in the face of truth. And this is our 
power as the creator of this universe. Why lies can be many, 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 one truth, remove all the lies. You'll see you have an argument and it's very, very, very complex, very, 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 very complex, lots of lies, lots of things. And all of a sudden someone come and say, but this is what's actually happened. That's the truth. And the lies crumble. The argument goes away. So every piece of truth relieve tons of lies. Every piece of truth, if it is indeed truth, remove tons of lies. But the point, the problem is that you get a piece of truth, you get one piece of truth and you remove all those lies, but the physical universe don't sleep at night. You sleep, the physical universe not. It continues to give you more and more and more lies. Life is composed of eight primary areas. To be successful in life, to choose truth over lies, you must discover the basic truth of those areas, the basic truth of life. The more truth you will discover, the less physical universe will be able to control you. So the more, to, so, so it's really a matter of number, you, you understand? You, you are buried somewhere here, you're buried here by mountain of lies. This is you and this is life. And you're buried here by mountain of lies. Every time you find a piece of truth, something goes away. You find a piece of truth, you open something. You find a piece of truth, you open something. You find a piece of truth, you open something. You find a piece of truth and all of a sudden you see that you can see the light here, some small light. And if you continue to do that, and if you continue to find more pieces of truth, more pieces of truth, you'll see that you'll find more and more lights. And all of a sudden there will be so much light that the lies will just go away, that the darkness will go away. Yes, Ashley. And by the way, this can fix anything. Enough truth can fix the body. Enough truth can fix the mind. Enough truth can fix a, a wall. You are so powerful that there is nothing that you cannot bring about by decision alone. And the only reason you cannot do it right now is because you've been suppressed continuously, continuously, continuously by the physical universe. Thank you. It is amazing, it's powerful. To unbalance the, and tip over the true to light, right, the true to light ratio in your life, you will need to get enough truth per week to undo enough lies. So it's just, you need to get a fix. You need to get, to get enough truth to delete enough lies every week, every week, every week, every week. You need to continuously handle it until such a time where you have enough truth that the lies will cannot go in because the truth is big enough and it's undoing automatically any lies you can give me any lie you want and i can smell it from a mile and it will not affect me because i have enough truth are you with me so i can look at any person and see the picture see exactly what's happening in his mind tell him immediately what he needs does he need to run a pleasure moment or or pain moment or this moment, does he need to look at that or does he look at that? And I help a person and he said, but how do you, did you not to ask this question? Because I have enough truth. So I can actually see. And every single person can be in that position. Every single person. There, it's, there's no magic, there's no spatial hidden power or something like that. So to unbalance the tip of the truth to lie ratio in your life, you will need to get enough truth per week to undo enough lies. And much like enough light will remove any darkness, enough truth will remove any lies from your life. And the result will be inevitable success. If you've been fighting and fighting and trying to be successful and didn't know what to do and tried and tried and everything you've tried was impossible, and even if you started something, it didn't really go, and you had bad luck or, or bad uh, situation or bad anything, 
you are missing the injection of truth. You are missing that fix. You need the fix. Really, the, the spirit live on truth. It's like a drug addict live on drugs. Nothing is more important to a drug addict than the drug. For the spirit, nothing more important for the spirit than the truth. Yes, thank you, Ashley. That's correct. Really, this, this is the answer, really. Now, I'm going to deliver a weekly webinar named Extreme Wisdom. So I'm going to do this thing that's called Extreme Wisdom every week. Yes? Every week or every few weeks, I will cover um, uh, the fundamental truth of an area of life. So I will take a fundamental of truth and I will cover it within a week, two weeks, three weeks, whatever. But every, there will be a period that I will handle that fundamental until all the lies blows for you. So the purpose will be, I'm going to blow the lies about boom. I'm going to blow the lies about the relationship snake, or I'm going to blow the lies about um, why people are afraid, or I'm going to blow the lies about why you anxious, or I'm going to blow the lies about why you cannot talk in front of people, or why you, are you afraid of people, et cetera, et cetera. Every week, or every, or it will be every few weeks or week, so the, the lesson will be every week, but I may go with one subject over a few weeks, yes? So every period, we will cover one area until it blows. Blows mean that every single person on the webinar will have no more charge over it and will feel that he's cause over that area. So we're going to build these channels here that I was talking to you about, those channels here those channels that will allow you to move and open more and more and more channels. So opening those channels here, opening those channels. And we open the channels and then we can go, you can walk through them. You understand? That's the idea. We need to blow the lies and there are so many lies. The result will be ever increased control over life, which of course immediately translates to ever increase exchange with all parts of life, or in short, a corrected life and a created future. This is the purpose, breaking the chains, exactly. This is the purpose, a corrected life and a created future. It's a lot of work. It's not something that happened over one lesson. It's not something that happened over five lessons. And those lessons are designed only for one thing, blowing lies. And um, I will be extremely, extremely um, um, intense with not buying any nonsense that you give me from your um, fake realities. Like when someone will come and say, well, you know, it is the whatever, uh, I don't know, the um, unconscious mind we will blow this thing that called unconscious mind because you said that for a long time that it's the unconscious mind and it didn't help you. So we need to blow that line. Anything that, you, oh, well, it's the stars. Okay, let's have a look. Is it really the stars? So be ready to confront. If you want to hear something that it's nice and beautiful and polite, and don't come. It's not for you. But if you want effective, if you want a corrected life and a created future, come. If you want a corrected life and created future, that's your place. Now you have two options to join. Monthly subscription or annual subscription. Yes, you'll definitely, the end result is you'll be able to take responsibility. The monthly subscription will allow, will allow you to attend four uh, lessons per month. Okay. The annual subscription will allow you to attend 50 classes, which means 50 weeks, almost a year, okay? The classes will uh, each be between one to two hours. Each class will have two replays in the following weeks. So if you didn't manage to make it, 
you can re-watch it and even if you watched it i will insist that you will re-watch the replay at least once more because it is number of time over the material that result in the, in deleting lies it's like a, an iron you need to go over the um, over the clothes a few times before it's actually smooth now the monthly subscription is 397 or 99 dollars per class um it's nothing it's really nothing for what you get you get your life back the annual subscription is two five four five or which is 49 dollars per class so if you buy annually you get basically 50 percent discount if you are part of the vip or the um, uh, inner circle the inner circle have 35 percent discount on that uh, and then um, which means it's a more or less, less 20 dollars or something like that uh, and the um, VIP have 10% discount on that. So it's another $245 discount. Okay, so it's really, I make it very, very, very extremely affordable and it is for anyone. I'm going to give you pieces of truth that the spirit recognizes truth. The truth is that you don't even have to understand it. If you just listen to what I say, you will see that the lies will blow. What day the class will be? The class will be Saturday at uh, uh, 6 p.m. Uh, Cape Town town time, which is, I think, uh, 12 p.m. South Af uh, uh, Eastern Standard Time. Okay? So, right, like this time. Okay? And... Whoever registered within 24 hours will get a credit of 299 in our store. So you can go and get any seminar, any webinar, anything that you want. And if it costs uh, uh, up to 299, you get it for free. And if it costs more, you, got, you get 299 discount. So you buy something that costs, uh, I don't know, 399 and you will get, uh, uh, you'll need to pay only $100, okay? How do you get registered? You go to gprosperity.com forward slash extreme. Uh, if there was ever anything that I highly recommend, it will be this thing. What is my guarantee? If at the end of a class, you must attend the full class. Yes, you cannot just come or don't come and say, I didn't like it. So if at the end of the a class, you feel you did not get the value you expected for that class, ask for a refund, at the end of the class, not a week later, and you will get your full money back for that specific class. No questions asked. So if by the end of the class you have, uh, you are unhappy, you think that uh, it's a waste of time, get your money back, not a problem. Okay, but you need to be in the class to evaluate if actually it's, it's, it has no value for you. You cannot just decide, oh, it has no value for me because I heard some snake saying something. Everyone with me? Everyone understand the extreme wisdom? Any question? Class is a, a period of time where I teach. It will be between one and two hours. Like a webinar that I'm doing right now. It will be in the form of webinar. Okay. I highly suggest you uh, join. Uh, the things that I will teach would be very different than other places, uh, than other a material that I teach because it will be more fundamental. Basically, basically, I'm going to take the fundamental truth of this universe, the thing that was putting the, the building blocks of this universe, explain it to you, and by you just listening to them, your life will improve, even if you don't understand them. But you will understand them, of course, yes? But this is so powerful, it's, it's like, um, it's like uh, so pervasive that uh, you, you will be able to pervade without observation. So it's like unbelievable. You will be able to get into it without looking at it. This is how powerful it is because it's so native to the spirit. That this data is so native to the spirit that regardless of the condition of the spirit, the spirit recognizes it as truth. That's what's so special in this, 
in this uh, extreme wisdom. That's why I'm calling it extreme wisdom because this data, um, it, it, you don't actually need to understand it. You will, I will make sure you understand it. But even if you don't, even if a person just hear it, he will know it's true. When the program start? The program will start by um, mid-August. So I want to finish first uh, this, uh, this section on the relationship snakes. Um, and the, so somewhere around the mid-August I will start. So probably within something like a month from now. Okay. So join. Go to gprosperity.com forward slash extreme. Register today. Get another $300 uh, discount, which is probably if you do the annual, it's almost another 20, 25% discount, 20% discount. Okay. Here we go. Let's continue. So what we will cover, how to create personal power, how to create the income you need, how to help anyone. Why don't you have friends? Health and your viewpoint. What is space and how it affects all aspects of your life? How do you handle doubt? How do you recover anyone from a loss? Your home universe. This is a very, 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 very exceptionally important subject. It is a subject that must be handled to open the door for truth. It's really, 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 really important. How to win the game of life. The laws of money and much, much, much more. It will be totally different than what you usually, we, what we usually do, because it's really covering the axioms of this universe. Now, I'm going back to the venom. This venom causes you to get away from powerful and good people. So when someone tell you you've been exploited, it will cause you to get away from powerful people. What is the snake logic? Powerful people are powerful since they exploit other people. You really have to understand that powerful people will want to use everyone around them. They are used to everyone obey them. They want to be to get people around them exploit. They will use people. So far so good. Did you notice that or not? You should not be exploited, so you must keep away from them, as otherwise you'll be exploited. So when he tells you, look, you should not be exploited, what he tells you is, number one, don't be next to powerful people. Yes? So what is the problem with this logic? If you will not be around powerful people, you will not create anything powerful. Because if you'll be around useless people, the only thing you'll be able to create is useless things. Since stupidity is contagious, if you and uh, weakness is contagious, and anything that is not um, a good or not good is actually con contagious, by you setting up good example, you'll see that you will improve people. And by you setting up bad example, you will see that you will destroy people. So if you are not next to powerful people, you will not be creating anything powerful. Furthermore, only powerful people can help you progress. But if you feel you are exploited by them, you will not, you will not get close to them. Only powerful people can get you to progress. Yes, of course, they will use you, but they will help you. I take someone that work with me, an employee, I definitely exploit him. I definitely use the maximum out of him. But I give him so much more. If he's smart enough, if he doesn't get the stupidity of the snake of no, Mary is difficult to work with, if he actually realizes what he gets, that is more than gold, that one hour with me, what's more than all his life. Are you with me? If you really get that, now, now we're talking. 
a person that work with me, usually they start to work with me and they tell me that they think that uh, I'm God. And I'm telling them, no, I'm not God, but I'm very, very, very able. I'm definitely not God, but I am so able that it makes people seem like they are weak. Now, if you are smart, you want to learn and to use that ability. If you are being bitten by a snake, you will think that it's a bad thing that I'm able. Are you with me? Only able people can help you. When something bad going, when something bad happen, you don't go and ask help from the useless. You go and ask help from the one that you know he's not, he's exploiting, he's powerful, he's unbelievable, but you know he will help you. He will come up with a solution. Are you with me? You go to, to the one that will tell you in your face, look, this is what you need to fix. And not the one that will tell you, oh, you poor thing. Look what's happened to you. I know you are trying. No, he will tell you, look, you bitch, you need to fix that because if not, you'll die. And I don't have time to nonsense like that. Do you want to produce? Produce. This is the game that I'm playing. I'm playing the big game. I'm playing the successful game. I'm not helping the useless. I'm helping the able. Do you want to be able or do you want to be crying? What do you want? This is the viewpoint. If you understand it, you'll see life will improve. If not, you'll feel that you've been exploited and you will be sitting together with all the useless people complaining about the powerful people that actually allowing you to live. Are you with me? Or you can become powerful yourself because everyone is basically extremely powerful. But it takes the ability to get over your own um, venom, the venom that you got from other people. Uh, and I've chosen to not listen to too many times. Yes, amazing. What must you do if you don't want to be exploited by powerful people? If you don't want to be exploited by powerful, by people, you must become someone that cannot be exploited. Are you with me? Who do you exploit? You exploit the person that don't take change. Why? Not because you want to exploit them. The, the mechanism is quite amazing. You, this is you and you are all powerful. And you've got this uh, dot here. You call himself a person, but he's a dot. And you tell him, look, I need from you to give me a report tomorrow by seven. And his mind is problems, 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 problems. He is like shooting problems at you. Now you have no choice but to say the hell with this guy. I'm going to put a beam here and make him do that. You now you force him into results. Yes. So you exploit him. However, if this is you, super powerful, and there's another super powerful guy here, and you say, look, I need the, this thing tomorrow by seven. And I, I say, here we go, take two by six. And I will say, whoa, how can I pay you? Are you with me? And it will be obvious that I will pay you. There is no question that I will pay you. Does it make sense? So you've been exploited only if you are useless. And this is really what the snake trying to tell you. You are useless and become even more useless. Does it make sense? Good. It's really, 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 really different. I know. But uh, if you want to survive, it's a tough universe. And even the lions have hard time. So who cannot be exploited? The only people that will never be exploited are the useless. No one suspects that anyone is going to exploit a homeless person as they have nothing to give. 
when you go so low that you cannot be exploited, you become homeless, useless. So if people don't want to exploit you, they know that uh, even the small thing that they can get from you by using beams or by using uh, all kinds of um, different techniques, powerful techniques, even that will not work because there's no one there anymore. The person is total effect. You have to realize it is an invitation to become useless in the guise of care and help. So the person dress like he wants to help you, but actually he invites you to become less powerful and less powerful. He wants you to become useless. Of course, this venom also gets you to get away and keep distance from people you love, your family, your boss your co-worker, etc. The same venom tells you, look, they are exploiting you. All of a sudden you find this guy is exploiting you and this guy is exploiting you and this guy. And every time you agree to that, what you agree, I'm useless, I'm useless, I'm useless, I'm useless, I'm useless, I'm effect, I'm effect, I'm effect, I'm effect. And so then the snake can control me. Now I'm sure you have this thing going on in your mind. But some people do exploit me or try to exploit me. Now, there is, the, the, here is the truth that you will find hard to accept. But before, but before I'm going to give you this truth, how will you define the word relationship? Give and take, okay? Exchange, okay? Maybe a synonym. Connection between two things, yes. Exchange of value. It is the measure of the pureness of two particles. Yes, exchange in abundance. Okay, connection between two particles, affinity with another person. And interaction between two terminals or two points. Yes. Okay. Exactly, Marcel. Okay. I define the word relationship as the, a word that describes the pureness of the connection between particles. So you have two particles, it can be people, it can be blocks, it can be animals, it can be pieces of metal. And the more the connection point is pure, the more the connection point is pure, the better the relationship. The more they can be connected, the more they can duplicate themselves. So when the connection point is very, very, very pure, what you do, you have something that uh, resembling sharing the same space, which means there is instant communication, instant reality, instant affinity, and instant understanding. So relationship is a word that describes the pureness of the connection between particle. Good relationship would mean extreme clean connection. Bad relationship means very, very dirty connection the two people cannot stay in the same room. Are you with me so far? It is pure connection between two people. Relationships are held together by the pureness of the connection that enables pure interchange. One never, no one ever exploited you in a relationship. If you have a relationship, there is no exploiting. No one can exploit you in a relationship. If someone exploits you, it means the relationship has been broken already. The why is not the exploiting. The why is the quality of the relationship. If we have no history together, do you actually know about someone that have no history together? I don't know the the guy on the other corner. So there's dirt and sins. So Shamaya, you 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 should know the answer to that. You definitely know. Number one, of course you know. Number two, you understand restimulation. Number one, of course, you know, not 8 billion, no, no, of course not 8 billion, 
but eight billiard of billions of beings. And number two, you have the re-stimulation. So, of course, you know. There is no such thing as exploiting you in a relationship except for one situation. Let me explain. How will you define the word exploit? We say that it's to take advantage of somebody, to take selfish or unfair advantage of a person or situation, usually for personal gain, or use something for benefits, to use or develop something in order to gain benefit. Exploit means to use someone by force below the awareness, resulting in turning the person into a physical universe particle. If I use force to get you to do something, you lost your self-determinism, so you are not anymore a person. You are a physical universe particle. The spirit is not there anymore. First, you cannot take advantage of someone in a relationship, since in a relationship, by definition, is a condition of give and take, pure interchange. So by definition, there's always an interchange in the relationship. So how can you take advantage? Are you with me? So if someone say that uh, he is being exploited in a relationship, the problem is not that he's been exploited. The problem is that the relationship do not exist and he's calling it a relationship. He's lying. He's not confronting. Are you with me? Second, the only exception, it is usually the person that complains of being exploited that is doing the exploiting by being a snake that bite with the exploit venom. A person that don't exploit will never think that he's being exploited. A person that don't steal will never think that someone steal from him. A person that don't lie will never suspect anyone of lying to him. And if someone did lie to him, he will be amazed, but he will not make a, a sin out of it. So in a relationship, if the relationship actually exists, and not if there is some camouflage that you call a relationship, if the relationship do exist, there's no exploiting. What? My son can exploit me? How can my son exploit me? Let's say he's just born. Can he exploit me? No, but I give him much more than what I give him today when he was born. Who can, who, how can he exploit me if I'm willing to do what I'm doing for his smile? That's the relationship. The relationship is very defined. There's no such thing as unequal exchange in the relationship. If there is a relationship, the exchange is always exchange in abundance. If the relationship broke, the side effect is that the exchange goes up. The side effect is all kind of thing happens. Are you with me? Third, only things can be exploited and things do not have relationships. A being, if he's there, if the spirit is there, it cannot be exploited because by definition, you are at least self-determined, usually pen-determined. So how can you be exploited? You have to not know to be exploited. You have to be a thing in order to be exploited. It's not easy to confront, but if someone exploited you, it means that your tone is so low that you are actually a thing. You are not a being. You deteriorated to a level of a physical universe. Only the physical universe can be exploited. A mind can be exploited. The ground can be exploited, not a being. A being is so powerful that he controls both sides of the game. Fourth, to be exploited, you must declare you are doing things that do not contribute to your life and you do them against your free will. If you say that I'm being exploited, which means I'm doing something bad against my life, against my different areas of my life, and I'm doing them against my free will, which means I'm not there anymore. 
only the physical universe can be exploited. Only when you are just your body and you are not you anymore, you can be exploited. Only people that don't have the knowledge of the spirit, that they don't really understand the spirit, can be exploited. But if you have the knowledge of what the spirit is all about, if you have the, the truth about the spirit, how can you be exploited? Only physical thing can be exploited. No one ever exploited you in a relationship. You have to be not there in order for your body to be exploited. Are you with me? It's just a justification for being useless. Look what he did to me. Why are you so useless that someone can do that to you? Explain to me. He is to blame. Seriously? Why have you been there? Why he did not do it to someone else? So basically I say, yes, there are snakes. But you have the responsibility to recognize them and handle them and not to cry about them because simply crying do not help. That, that's the only reason. That's why I'm against crying. I don't have anything against crying other than it doesn't help. No one can exploit you in a relationship. There is no such thing as exploiting you in a relationship except for what situation. For a friendship, to be a friendship, you always give someone and get something. There will not be a connection without this interchange. The something is not measurable, but is always more valuable than acknowledged. It's not measurable, but it's always more valuable than it's acknowledged. The smile of a baby is more valuable than acknowledged. The milk of a mother or the hours of her staying awake is much more uh, valuable than what is acknowledged. The lesson that I give you right now is much more valuable than you can acknowledge because if you would, you will want to work for me for the rest of your lives, not this life. So it's always much more valuable than acknowledge. If someone claim they were exploited, they lie as otherwise they could not have been a relationship. And two, they are ungrateful. They're actually not only lying, but they are not exchanging. So if a mother say, oh, the child exploit me. No, she's ungrateful for the smile. She's lying. And if the child say, my, uh, my mother is ungrateful, here's the same story. Are you with me? If you're in a relationship, you need to exchange and you need to make sure that the exchange is good and you need to be there. And when someone tries to explain, exploit you, part of the relationship is to put the ethics in and not to cry about, oh, I've been exploited. He will try to exploit me. I will just give him the look and he will X his own head. Are you with me? The exploit venom is very tricky as it is based on convincing you that you gave more than you got. How do you measure and give the give and take in a relationship? In a relationship, it is almost impossible to measure what you gave and what you got as relationships are held together by the pureness of the connection that enable pure interchange. So it's not what you give and what you got, it's the dirt that you can measure. Are you with me? The give and take in a relationship does not have a definite value. There is one thing you can measure for sure. Anyone that tries to convince you to give less is trying to destroy your relationship. That's you can measure. You should give more and more. And if you find you don't get back enough, you can ask, demand, communicate, and do or do something much better. Are you with me? But don't sit down and cry. What is the thing that you can do better? If you will actually check, you will find 
you're getting much more than you know from your relationships. Much more. But don't you know what you give in a relationship with a friend? Read, uh, listen again to what I was just reading and you will have the answer. I'll answer that. Trying to give less is actually be a betrayal by you. The thing to do is you need to pick up a relationship you are unhappy with and you have some issue with that relationship. So pick up one relationship that you are unhappy with and have some issues in the relationship, any relationship. Right now, past relationship, current relationship with someone that alive, someone that dead, it's irrelevant. Pick up a relationship you are unhappy with. Something that <laughs> did not go as well. Okay. Now write all the value you got from that relationship, all the value you get from that relationship, everything from acknowledgement to money, to understanding, to a game, to a challenge, to all the value you get. Write down. Let me know when it's done, okay? It cannot be like two lines. It, it has to be a book, <laughs> so a page. If it's two line, you are not looking. You've done something against that relationship, so you have to make that relationship wrong. If you cannot find, like just like that, in a quick look, a page, oh, you need to clean your hands. Something is not clean with this relationship. It's never the other side. It's always me. If you cannot find a page of good things about any relationship you have, you need to start cleaning your hand. Yes, the list goes on and on. That makes more, lots of sense. Now, now, I want you to look again and find even more value you get from the relationship. And actually write it down, not just, not just glance on it, but write it down, like write what is it exactly, because if you will confront it, something magical will happen. But you need to do the exercise, yes, if you'll not do it. Good, Bobby, very good. You need to do the exercise to have the result of the exercise. Okay, if you just listen, no participation, you're not actually participating by thinking. I'm not asking you to think about it, but I want you to write it. Done and wow, exactly. It is a perfect relationship. Wow, that's amazing. Wow. So from an unhappy relationship to a perfect relationship is a big jump. Very well done. Amazing, Karen. Okay, Margaret, that's very good. That's usually what happens. If you are unhappy with the relationship, you are blind to the good in it. Exactly, Manuel. Yeah, amazing, Ahmed. The rest of you was good. honestly missed it. It melt all the barriers we used to have and have an urge to talk to them again. Amazing, Natasha, go ahead and do it. Do it. Communicate for sure. This beautiful relationship with the pluses and minuses plus outweigh the minuses. That's amazing. Juliana, very good relationship. Okay. Good, good, Natasha. Do it. Win. Wow. Totally see 
how I acknowledge the value he provided. Totally new viewpoint on the relationship. Amazing, amazing, amazing. I mean, I'm in complete without the relationship. Yeah, wow, that's amazing, Bobby. My friend passed away. I realized just how many pluses I had with the relationship. Far more than the minuses. Amazing. I see there is a lot more connection. Yes, Margaret. That's amazing. And you're giving me the realization already. True that I get so much more, very little dirt. Amazing. So you will see the law is like that. If you have a relationship that you are unhappy about, you are not acknowledging the good. If you are unhappy about the relationship, your hands are dirty. Thank you, Marcel. Yes. I'm really, really stubborn. I only found three good things. One more. Okay. Very good, Arjuna. Look, that's what you need. This is the drill that you need. Started with one relationship, but couldn't come up with the much and then realized how much he helped me when I was sick in 2022. There is always a lot. Always, 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 always. And when you have the stable datum that you, it is you, that caused the relationship. It is you, it's not the other side, it is you. If the relationship doesn't work, it's fine, but don't blame the other side. It is not because he is not okay or she is not okay. It is always me, always, 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 always me exclusively. Yes. Okay, that's all for today. Thank you for caring for doing all the admin behind the scene and helping every day all the time without any any effort on my side just just totally unbelievable and thank you for gal for um fixing the presentation the english and thank you for participation and um, i will let you know about next week if i'm doing a, the webinar or not maybe yes maybe not i'm not sure yet uh, I will let you know, we will um, yeah, either send you an uh, invite or not, and if not, it will be the week after or whatever. Uh, I'm starting to prepare the one, the seminar in Canada, so I will be less available for the next uh, two, three weeks for preparing, for delivering webinars. Uh, but get ready for extreme wisdom. It will be extremely life-changing, extremely. Don't miss that opportunity. Okay. That's all. Thank you. I love you. And I will see you Monday on the inner circle, last inner circle before the uh, one. Bye.